Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to continue our journey of testing. And if you remember the video where I introduced you to the testing pyramid, we want to take now a look into the basement of this pyramid, which is called unit testing. This video is following structured. First, we want to talk about what is unit testing. Secondly, we want to understand what makes a good unit test. And third, we want to jump right into code and learn how we write our first unit test. And now let's begin with what is a unit test. What is unit testing? Essentially, a unit test initializes a small part of your application or system and tests its behavior independent from other parts of the application. A typical unit test contains out of three parts. First, initialization of pieces of the application, arrange, execute something on your application, act, and third, we're talking about assert, so observe the expected result. These three phases are also known as the three A's and called arrange, act, and assert. I want to give you five points that you should keep in mind if we are talking about unit testing. First, a good unit test should be easy, writable, and maintainable. We as developers work mostly on code bases that has lots and lots of unit tests, like around 1500 I also already know from my project, which is considered relatively small. Therefore, it does not surprise that these unit tests or good unit tests has to be very easy to write and also easy to maintain. Your good unit test should be readable. Code in a project should follow along of the metaphor of a book. It has like titles, subtitles, chapters, subchapters, and so on and so forth. A good code base needs to be very easily readable. So if you jump right into a unit test, you want directly to understand which part of the application is affected, tested, and how you can implement and make it better. So this will help you along the way to easily detect, fix, and debug bugs in your code. A good unit test should be reliable. Think about a very big project where you have to run all the tests and all the tests and suddenly some of the tests are just failing without any particular reason. The problem is because of single tests that are failing, you start to detrust all other tests. That means if the developer loses trust in the testing framework, they start to skip testing or don't write tests anymore. For example, we run a single test, which is always working, but if we run it in a random order or even are dependent on other tests, then the test could fail without any particular reason. So be careful about these things because if the developer is losing the trust into the tests, we get some very big problems. And keep in mind, a good unit test, and we will come to that later, should be independent from external factors, such, for example, execution order. So if one test runs before another, it shouldn't affect the test itself. A good unit test should be fast. We write a lot of tests inside of our project. And if we would now wait every time, like five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes for our tests, even though it is 1,500 tests, we would try to be more productive by skipping testing. So we would maybe not run our testing case, cases correctly and we wouldn't understand the problems that happens. A slow unit test indicates usually that we have some connections to external systems or making any environmental dependent things. And a good unit test should be independent. A unit test is not an integration test and that is very important to know. Therefore, we have to make sure that our unit tests don't depend on databases, file systems, external factors, and all of these because we want to get rid of all these dependencies. If you keep these things in mind, you will write easily much better codes. I got yesterday also a nice little tweet that says me that you should keep your unit tests as your friend. Fast, reliable, independent, easy of maintenance, nearly compacted code, and dependency should be less. So it, this could help you to memorize how you should keep your unit tests. So now that we have covered the theory behind unit tests, let us begin to write some code. I will demonstrate it typically for this channel in Flutter and Dart, but all of these parts and patterns can be also applied to other object-oriented languages like for example C-sharp or Java. As always, you will find down in the video description below a link to the repository where you can find a list of to-dos that you can follow along this tutorial. 
And because you are now such amazing people, you want to give that video here a like and subscribe to our channel already. And now let's jump into code. All right, welcome to my code base and let me explain what we want to do today. As you can see on the right side, depending on the time where we come into the app, we will see a very big screenshot of an image. We have four different images that can be visible inside of our screen depending on the time. That would be afternoon, evening, morning or night. So depending on the time, the app will show us one of these four things. Also, it will tell us in the top part, good afternoon, good evening, good night and good morning, depending on the time. So now let's jump into our code. For that, we have a screen created, my home screen or my home page. And in this home page, we ask for an asset image, depending on a class called time helper, which get us time of day. And also the good part where we get from the text, we get from this time helper. If we jump now into the code, we can see the following. We have in time helper a static method, which returns us a string. Also, what you can see is we get the current date time. Depending on that, we return night, morning, afternoon, or evening. And now our goal is that we want to test this. For that, I created as always a lot of to do's. And if you remember in IntelliJ, you press Command, Shift and T for Mac users and you jump right away into the test. You will find down in the video description for Visual Studio Code users an extension that will help you to make it also possible to jump between your tests and your normal files. As you can see, I created already the file for us and we have this test folder in every Flutter project, right? Util, which is the same folder structure like here. And then we have the time helper test.dart. Make sure that the file name is exactly the same like the real class that we want to test, but add an underscore test to it to make sure that this is recognized as a test. So this is our first test that we want to write. For that, we will have to implement a main function. And inside of this main function, we can now write our very first test. So let's write a test, which comes from the dependency flutter test.dart. And inside of this test, we first have to pass down a description what we want to test. So let's, for example, use one should be one. And then we have to write a callback inside. And this callback will be our test buddy. So here inside, we can test our stuff. For example, we learned that we want to use the free ace. Arrange, assert. So these are our goals that we want to achieve. And now with a range, we can say that we have an expected number, which should be one. Another thing is now we want to act, but in our case, we don't do that. So we keep that empty, but we want to assert. We expect that expected number is the same like one. All right. So if everything works well, this test should be green. Now we have multiple possibilities to start up this test, but what I want to do is going to the terminal and execute flutter test. And easy as that, our test is automatically running. And as you can see, all tests has been passed. If we now change something in the test, for example, the expected number should be two, we will see that if we run that again, the test will fail. The good thing about this result is that we get here also the expected and actual. So the expected value was two. We wanted that this test gets a two here inside, but actually we received a one. So that means whatever is written on the left side is what we received and th this part is what we expected. So that we know that now we want to write some real tests here. So for that, I will create a test with the description of time helper should return night, for example, as the first test that we write. So when we have a certain date time, we want that it returns night. For that, we will call time helper we will import the time helper and then we ask for get time of the day. And now what we can do is we expect whatever comes from here uh, should be night. So some of you have maybe already seen a problem here, but let's run this time helper. What I did here is I run it inside of IntelliJ. You have the same possibility in VS Code and we have there some integration. I will add a link down in the video description, which explains that a little bit more further. But what you can see is that the expected night was actually afternoon. Hmm, how can we test now this method beautifully? If we jump inside, we can see that our dependency 
to the datetime object of now lives inside of the function which makes it impossible to unit test it. So what we have to do is we have to pass down a date time object inside of the function and remove this part. But as you can see now, our clients will complain about that because they will still need the date time. We could even improve our code further by inversion of control. I will add a link down in the video description but we will tackle that in a different video. For now, for us, it's important that we are now able to pass down here a value. So what we want to do is again, this is our assert, right? We want to act and we want to arrange. Now let's arrange our test. We need a date time, which has a certain hour inside to make it possible to send us the night. For that, we jump into get time of the date and we see that we receive night whenever we are between zero and six o'clock. So we have to set up a date time with 2020, because if you remember, we have to add these parts. We just take the first month of the year, the first day, and now the hour should be something between zero and six. So I will use five. That's already enough to make this test work. Now we say we have here test uh, day time, which is our current time. And this current time has to be passed inside of this function. But because we want to keep the arrange, act and assert part, we act here in that place. And this one gets a result of string time of day. And now we expect that time of day is night. If we did now everything correctly, our test should be run with a green tick. So let's try that. We run our test and you see we get a pass test. We can also execute again in the terminal flutter test to see if the tests are running fine. Yes, all tests are running. So what we could do now is we can copy that whole part here where we create the current time and copy it here and just change the hours if we want to find the afternoon. Why would we create such a test? You maybe ask. But if we jump into time helper, I could just easily change here, for example, the string to 90. That could be still right, but it would break our code somehow because if we are, for example, here in the, we are currently in the afternoon -y, and if I'm checking the app, you can see we have an embarrassing error here. And additionally, the image is not visible anymore. So we can av avoid these problems by running our unit tests. So we have the afternoon and the afternoon is at the moment it is 15. And if we run these tests, everything should be fine. Great. So I will quickly add all the other tests here. Okay, now if I add all the tests and run them, you can see we get a lot of green ticks and we see that night, afternoon, morning and evening. And the good thing is if I'm now making my spelling mistake here and let the tests running, we will see that we get a broken test. So one test is failed with the expected afternoon, but the actual was after Nui. And that is of course not correct. Now that we know that all of these to-dos are gone already, besides of one. As you can see, we write now everywhere time helper in front of it. So we can make that a little bit more easier and convenient for us. So we can group tests. So for example, that we say we have a group of time helper and execute our command here. And now we wrap all the tests inside of this group. And this group don't do anything much, but it gives us the possibility to group semantically different parts together. So we can remove this time helper here in that case. Also here, here and here. And if we run now our tests with the help of IntelliJ, you will see the following. Here we have now the time helper as a parent and then the different parts of it. And to make it more explicit, it is not only the time helper that we test here, actually it's the function get time of the day, because it could be that we have later also more. So we could create even a second group responsible for the get time of the day task. So if I'm running now again, flutter tests, I think everything should be fine. And with that, we created our very own first unit test. Perfect guys. With that, we created our first unit tests. Now you should be able to understand what a unit test is, what it needs to write a good unit test. And last but not least, you can write a unit test in Dart. Now it is your turn and you want to make your application fast, reliable, and also increase the software quality. I hope you learned something today. 
And now it is the time to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching, until the next time.